Hello and welcome to Footnotes, the Cicerone podcast, a podcast to inspire you about outdoor travel and activities in the UK and across the world. I'm Hannah. And I'm Amy. And thanks for joining us for our latest episode. We're delighted to be joined this episode by Harry McQueen, the writer and director of a brilliant new film called Supernova, and Dick Pope, the cinematographer of that film. Filmed on location in the Lake District, Supernova follows Tusker, played by Stanley Tucci, a writer who has been diagnosed with early onset dementia, and his partner Sam, played by Colin Firth, as they go on a road trip in the camper van around the Lake District as they come to terms with Tusker's illness and what it means for them as a couple. And we should preface at the beginning that the film does deal with sensitive and upsetting issues of terminal illness and discussions of suicide. This is Harry McQueen's second feature film. His debut, Hinterland, came out in 2015. We're going to talk to Harry and Dick today about filming on location in the Lake District, why they chose that location for the story, and whether they managed to climb any hills in between filming. So before we share our interview with Harry McQueen and Dick Pope, we're going to start off with a quick summary of the film and a quick discussion, just to put it in context for you when you listen to the interview. Hannah and I were really lucky to be able to watch the film in advance of its release via a streaming link so we can give you a summary of the film and the themes that it covers and yeah, talk about how the landscape of the Lake District is important within the film. A brief summary of the film, without giving any spoilers away, the film starts following Tusker and Sam as they journey through the Lake District towards a performance that Sam has got arranged. He's a pianist. And they're they're revisiting some incredible locations on the way. And that is something that's really important to Tusker. And he's planned this road trip for them to do. So they've got a camper van. They're driving up through the Lake District, visiting places that they've enjoyed together. I think for both of us, as it's set in the Lake District, there's a lot of places in it um, that we enjoyed looking and kind of recognizing and I'm sure that for our listeners and people that you know love the Lake District you'll enjoy this film spotting locations in the Lake District that you recognize and kind of figuring out where they film certain bits Um, and it's a really great showcase for the Lake District landscape. Yeah it's not at times the most happy film and there's some really moving and quite difficult moments in the film and a lot of difficult concepts are discussed and explored so I think the Lake District has got that grandeur that it needed to have and the drama and the power and the ability to be frightening and foreboding and threatening as well as calm and peaceful and beautiful the landscape really it is like a cast member of the film They've thought about the landscape at every stage of making the movie and Dick Pope has just brought out some of the best bits of the Lake District and some of that beauty that we all know is there. And of course, trying to deal with the Cumbrian rain, which apparently was an issue. Yeah, they really face quite a few challenges filming in the Lake District in autumn with how, you know, torrential the rain can be and how difficult it can be to find weather windows and that sort of thing. And just taking advantage of every moment of sunshine that they got or by contrast, the certain scenes where they wanted it to be a bit moodier and they wanted the landscape to reflect what's going on in the scenes a bit more um, rather than a juxtaposition. And yeah, so they really capture all of that within the film. And perhaps not with the background of Tusker's illness, but I think that sense of going on a road trip around the Lake District and revisiting places that you went to when you were younger is perhaps a more universal experience than... Yeah, I mean, not everybody can relate to having early onset dementia, but everybody can relate to going on a a road trip, camping holiday with your loved ones. And um, I thought it was quite fitting that they were bickering quite a bit in the beginning of the movie, because actually trying to spend some time in a, a camper van with your loved ones can be a challenge, as we know. Driving on the the roads in the Lake District in a, a camper van can be a challenge. There's a whole bit, isn't there, where they're arguing about using a sat-nav or using the map, which I just thought was (laughs) very relatable. (laughs) Um, And of course, you know, sat-navs don't always work in the Lake District and in Cumbria where roads might have changed or the sat-nav's not up to date enough. I thought that was great. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, they should have had one of those moments where they, the sat-nav is telling them to drive straight through Windermere or something, because sometimes they, they are quite wrong, aren't they, the sat-navs? 
Yeah, so I think there's a lot in the film that's quite universal in terms of going on a journey and experiencing place. And yeah, I'm sure that people will enjoy the film for almost reliving that sort of experience and getting to see these very famous actors playing out things that you might have done yourself on a holiday in the Lake District. We're really lucky, actually, because we got approached by the film company Amy and I were given a a special streaming link to watch the film before it was released in the UK, which did feel really, really lucky. And it was fortunate that we had each other to talk to after we'd watched the movie because it was an incredibly moving film. And I think we both felt the urge to discuss it. Quite apart from the podcast, we felt the urge to talk to somebody else that had seen the film. Yeah, I think for me, I absolutely loved this film and I I loved Harry McQueen's first film, Hinterland. And it's quite a similar film in terms of Hinterland is also a road trip movie, but it's more about the coast than about the Lake District. Um, So I was really excited anyway when this film was coming out and then to be able to actually watch it in advance um, and then talk to the director and writer um, and the cinematographer was just so exciting. For me, what's wonderful about this film is that it's a really moving narrative between these two characters and what they're going through is just so heartbreaking. But also, as we've said, it's got these moments of humour throughout. And the fact that that story is set within a place that I know so well, the Lake District, and it's the place that I've grown up and especially as they filmed it around Keswick, which is an area that I know very well. Um, I just thought it was really special to actually see places that, that I know and love. It's, well, not even the background, as you said, that it's like another character, isn't it? There's another character in this amazing story. And I'm looking forward to other people seeing the Lake District in this light. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge film person. Um, so I think, you know, I recognise Colin Firth from being Mr. Darcy and things like that. But I'm not great with films and I didn't have that same level of excitement maybe that, that you did. But actually, it was shot in just the most beautiful way. It was really a piece of art to just watch and enjoy. And I think the plot in itself is quite simple and it's very much a character piece. It's about the two of them and their physical journey through the Lake District, but also about their emotional journey that they go through and what they have to come to terms with. And I just think the two of them work really well together and McQueen did it very successfully in Hinterland and I think he's done it very successfully again in Supernova. And the music was really nicely done as well. The music worked really well with the landscape. So the film's called Supernova, which is the name of a stage in the life cycle of a star. Amy, you really appreciated how the the theme of stargazing went through the movie, didn't you? Well, in the Lake District, obviously it rains an awful lot. But we're also very lucky that we do have nights where it's very clear skies and the stargazing potential is just amazing. You know, our listeners, if you've ever spent a night out in the Lake District, um, it might have been something that you experienced maybe on the top of a hill or in the garden of the holiday home or outside of your camper van or a tent, wherever you're staying. You can have these amazing stargazing experiences. The theme of actually stargazing and, and of the supernova is also really beautifully woven through. The idea that just because you're at the end of life doesn't mean that you're at the end of your influence on things. A supernova gets to the end of its its life and explodes and then infiltrates everything billions of miles away with a tiny, tiny piece of what it once was. And there's that, you know, that whole thing about we're all made of stardust is a nice image of how we are part of that larger life cycle of the planet and all of the parts within it get recycled around. And it's very sad, but there's a beautiful solemnity and calm about this film an acceptance of the life cycle that we are all in and we can't avoid. And obviously having early onset dementia is particularly sad and early a way to face getting towards the end of your life. But it's quite inspiring how the characters face up to their future and their journey facing that is also reflected in the film. There's some lovely moments um, because Tusker is the character who is the stargazer. He's the astronomer. And there's these lovely moments where he's teaching other characters how to identify particular stars. Or there's a bit where he shows Sam how to locate the Milky Way. Within the story, it's a very poignant experience. But I think that sense of sharing your knowledge of the environment and of the outside world 
and you know pointing things out like oh well that's the pole star and that's then how you find this you know stuff like that that's an experience that I think many of us that go out and enjoy the outdoors experience you know passing on that knowledge of the environment and of nature and I don't know whether it's going a little bit too far down the rabbit hole but I find going out onto the hills or looking at the sea anywhere really where I can get that big wide view I find really calming and it really helps me sometimes to remember that I am a very small part in a bigger world. You know, if there's anything that I'm worried about, it just makes it feel less important in a nice way when I'm looking at the vastness of the ocean or the huge mountains all around me. And I think the same can be said for looking into space and just thinking, you know, even the things that we see as being the closest stars to us are so, so far away. And that vastness of what you can see there is in a strange way quite comforting, I think. The shots in the film range between very close up and very intimate within the camper van setting and then to these vast expansive shots of either the Lake District or the night sky. I watched this on quite a small screen, but I would absolutely love to see this again on a huge cinema screen because I think that would emphasise and, and showcase the vastness of the Lake District and of how Dick Pope filmed it. I think it would just absolutely showcase that to its highest level. So the film is out on the 25th of June, which if you're listening to this on Wednesdays when we release it, that will be Friday. And if you are local to the Lake District, there is a screening at at Regid. And yeah, Amy and I would implore you to go and see this movie and see it on a big screen. And for that screening at the Regid Discovery Centre, which is near Penrith, Harry McQueen is actually doing an introduction for it and will be there in person and doing a QA and a afterwards. And that is on the 2nd of July at 7.30. So yeah, if you're up in the Lake District or you live nearby and you fancy seeing the film and hearing more from the director and the writer, Harry McQueen, that would be a great event to go to. If you are up in the Lake District or planning a trip up here, we do have a few different guidebooks to walking, cycling, mountain biking, etc. in the area. And we do have some specific books to the Keswick area and a few walks that cover and visit locations that Supernova was actually filmed at. We have the Mark Richards Fell Ranger book for Keswick, and there's Vivian Crow's Low Level and Lake Walks in the Lake District, which has particularly got a walk around Crummock Water, which is one of the key filming locations that they used for the film. There's probably plenty of places that we couldn't quite recognise as well, I was quite amazed watching the film, um, how they managed to film shots that made it look like the camper van was going up the very steep Lake District passes. And as we hear from from Dick in our interview, um, yeah, it was very cleverly filmed to create that impression. With no other vehicles on the road. So how long they were waiting for that shot, we will will (laughs) never know. (laughs) It was absolutely wonderful to speak to both of them and we hope you enjoy listening to the interview. Welcome Harry McQueen and Dick Pope to Footnotes, the Cicerone podcast. Thank you both so much for joining us today. I want to say, first of all, congratulations to both of you on the film. I think it's an incredibly moving and thought-provoking piece of work. I absolutely loved it and just want to say thank you. And it's a real privilege to be able to talk to both of you today. Thanks very much. That's really kind of you. So Harry, the film is set in the Lake District in autumn, and I think it's a brilliant showcase for the area. Was this the setting that you always had in mind and why did you choose it? It was the setting I always had in mind, partly because I have some family that live in the North Lakes. And um, so I've known the area for about 10 years quite well through visiting them. And it's just a really, obviously, it's a very inspiring, beautiful place to be, you know, anyway. So I had written a bit of it whilst I was staying up there and that kind of landscape was, um, you know, fed into the script naturally. And so then felt really yeah equally natural to try and film it there if we could and it's not always possible to or hardly ever really possible to film where you intend to film but we really got lucky you know and um yeah i would say 98 percent of the entire film is within the boundary of uh, of the lake district so yeah it was amazing to be there so for for both of you you had a development stage after the script was written where you could drive around and sort of check out the locations How did you choose those places? Did you just stumble across a couple of amazing locations or did you have the specific places in mind? 
Well, a bit of both, really. Um, I had some specific places in mind because they were places that I'd visited whilst I was writing the film and knew quite well. But you have to be really flexible and creative with your choices because it's not always possible to film where you want to. And you obviously can find better locations than you you know, imagined as well. So Dick and I drove around the lakes uh, a lot and found some really amazing places and some yeah, surprising places too. Yeah, mostly in the rain, must be said. Dick, had you ever been to the Lake District before or was this a new experience for you? I don't know it very well. I didn't know it very well before we started, I should say. But um, quite a long time ago when I used to shoot documentaries, I did a a round Britain car rally and I buzzed all over the Lake District in a souped up Toyota Celica, I think it was. But on those sort of films, you get out and you shoot and you get back in the car and you don't really know where you are. So it wasn't really valid. But as my only experience there, I hadn't really explored it or visited it before that. So this was really a baptism for me for that area of the world. And as the cinematographer, were there particular places that you went to and you thought, yes, this has to be in the film? I felt that about most of it, really. Um, Most of it was stunning, beautiful. Obviously, the area is famous for its autumnal colours and leaves and the fall. But um, Harry really had a lot of these places down and we would drive all over the place. We drove for weeks looking at different locations. And um, yeah, some of them we wanted to be very dramatic, not pretty, but in a way foreboding and bleak and brutal. And they were. We filmed quite a big scene in Honiston Pass and we didn't really want great weather for that. and We didn't get it either. You know, we got a suitably doer, rainy experience there. But most of the time we weren't walking it. We were driving and we would get out of the car and hike a bit. I think one of my favourite memories of it was we found a location when when the two of them arrive at a lake and camp for the night, somewhere they'd been many years before. Harry had a really favourite location in mind for that. And um, we went along and explored it and spent quite a lot of time there and worked out how he would shoot it. And then some conservation group who were in that lake Their research was about a prehistoric mussel, freshwater mussel. Harry would know which lake it was. Can you remember which lake it is? Uh, I just, I knew I'd be put on the spot. (laughs) I I think it was Lowe's Water. I think it was. Anyway, we were all set to shoot there and suddenly we got these messages saying we couldn't shoot there. We weren't going in the lake. We were camped by the side of it, or the camper was by the side of it. We weren't going to interfere with any prehistoric freshwater mussels. We had no intention of, um, you know, like compromising their existence. But... Were they worried about maybe Colin jumping in and trying to recreate <laughs> yeah, but... his uh, famous shirt scene? <laughs> yeah, we were all worried about that. <laughs> both of them jumping in. Um, but anyway, there we go. No mussel was harmed in this film. No freshwater mussel. It's a first for me because I've never, ever had a location refused for that reason that we could jeopardise the research into this muscle. Anyway, we were out and we had to find somewhere pretty fast. And Harry came up with an alternative, which we went to see. And I think it was better. I Mm. think it was better than the first choice. It certainly worked for us. And it didn't have any freshwater muscles in, in (laughs) in the lake. Harry, would you mind, if you can remember, would you mind listing the locations that you filmed at, the main ones, so that people know where to look out for when they watch the film? Well, the, the lake that Dick's referring to was Crummock. We were based in Keswick as a you know filmmaking unit. That was our HQ in Keswick, in the old pencil factory there. We sort of converted that and used it as a warehouse space. We stayed just north of Bassenthwaite. The cottage at the end of the film is the other side of Skidder. I can't actually remember exactly what the place is called, actually. It's called The Dash, the cottage, but I can't remember what the actual location is. But it's up up that way. Really beautiful. And the house that they stay in, the sister's house, Lily's house, Lee and Clive's house, is in... Um, it's a tiny hamlet, and I'm just going to forget it now. <laughs> very close to a very fine pub. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If, that, if that's of any use to you or every... That's yeah, always co- crucial. Near a place called Lawton. And the supermarket is over in, actually in Yorkshire, but only just into Yorkshire. At the spa at Sedbur. That's exactly... I recognise that. I cycled <laughs> to that 
that was a funny moment for me seeing huge celebrities that I admire walking around a spa that I cycle to. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, quite fun. And then pretty much all of the rest of it is, yeah, Honest to Pass, as Dick said, uh, Latter Forest. So kind of all around that area. So most of the film, to be honest, is in a sort of 10 mile radius of Keswick. It sounds like you really got to some really special spots of the Lake District that maybe only locals or real fans of the Lake District get to explore, which is what's so lovely. There's no um, traditional shots of Bowness on Windermere or anything like that. It is more secluded, remote locations, which is beautiful. Yeah, we wanted to avoid that, really, because, you know, you just want to make the film your own, you know, and it's uh, the character's experience is the important thing. But also, you know, it's, it's a road movie, so we wanted to hide a lot that we were in the Lake District because we needed to make this journey make sense. And what were the logistics of filming on, you know, the narrow country roads of the Lake District with a big camper van? How did you go about that? Dick might have quite a lot to say about that. Um, it was well, it was really it's really hard. I mean, making a road movie is always a challenge because you don't have a lot of control over the elements most of the time. But you know, as amazing as Lake District is, I don't know whether it's necessarily geared up for a massive camper van and a film crew following it uh, on a lot of the roads we were on. Just going back to something you said earlier was um, about we didn't film at any of the big tourist kind of vista spots. Well, of course, for me, I didn't know what they were. But we were always looking for a detail. In any landscape where we're filming it, it's something about it, either the light or the... Yeah, the light, really, at the moment, is captured as a detail. You know, and there's lots of those in the film, and they've they've shot from many different places. So you actually wouldn't recognise, even if it was a well-known vista, We wouldn't really be doing that, not on the film we did. We didn't really film like that. We would stop and say, well, look at that over there on the horizon. And it was details. And we went out, Harry and I, with a camera, with a very small unit in a couple of vehicles on a a couple of weekends when the main unit was off. And we would just drive all over the place. And uh, Harry and I would be in the front vehicle and we would say to each other, oh, my God, look at that. And we would climb out and clamber out. The guys were in the vehicle behind and they'd bring out the gear and we'd go over a fence or through a gate or just by the side of the road and shoot something that looked just magical at that moment. That's the thing. I mean, you could go and explore and explore. And if you didn't have the weather, it'd be quite difficult. But we would stop and, you know, the weather changed all the time. Obviously, every five minutes it was different. And we would find these moments over and over in all these different remote places where you could hardly get a vehicle down. But a lot of those weren't with the camper van. They were just us shooting the landscape or moving along the road as if we were in the camper van, but we weren't. We were just outside of the camper, just shooting from um, camera vehicles, etc. And autumn is just an incredible time in the Lake District anyway. So I know you guys love the Lake District. What did Colin and Stanley think of it? Oh, they loved it. I mean, to tell you the truth, I don't think they'd been up there. Well, Stanley had never been up to the Lake District before, ever. And Colin, I think, had only been once, maybe, or twice, and a long time ago. So, yeah, they really, really loved it. We all did. It's a beautiful place to be, you know, whatever time of year, because, like Dick said, it changes so much, uh, you Mm. know, daily. But certainly in the autumn, it's just, uh, yeah, it's completely beautiful, really. Next time the four of you um, are in the Lake District, do let us know, because we have lots and lots of Cicerone guidebooks, and we can take you out and and explore some of the hills of the Lake District if you wanted to do that. I mean, did you get out and explore? Um, Did you go on any hill walks whilst you were in the area? must be honest and say that I didn't, but mainly because I didn't really have enough time to tell you the truth. But most of the cast and crew did at weekends and stuff. And I've done it a lot before, obviously, you know, with my family and stuff. So I didn't really, but it's just an amazing part of the world to work in because, you know, in your downtime, there's so much stuff to do, you know, so there was a lots of hill walking and people went on the rivers and fishing and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was great. And I'm really glad that you were based at the Keswick Pencil Factory because that's such a classic, iconic location um, in the North Lakes. So, yeah, I'm glad that the factory is getting used. It got used all right. We turned turned the factory floor into a little bit of a studio area where we shot. Um, So it became like Pinewood Studios in Keswick. Um, We took the camper van in there and did some night scenes inside the camper in the pencil factory. 
they had to take out a bit of concrete and a bit of roof to get the camper van in and let down the tires. And um, yeah, the pencil factory was our headquarters, our studio, and um, it's where we centred ourselves. Fantastic. So, Harry, just a quick, more serious question. The film deals with early onset dementia, and it, one of the many key scenes in the film is the one that we've mentioned that you filmed at Crumwick Water. With your knowledge from your dementia research, do you know whether places can help with triggering memories in the same way that sound or taste can? Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely they can. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things about dementia, like broadly speaking, is that it's so varied person to person, naturally. So a lot of things can help individuals, yeah. And it can be it can be just as simple as going back to somewhere you haven't been to for many years. What often happens is that the hardwired memories you have stay with you, or at least stay with you the longest. And it's actually the short-term memory stuff, the stuff that you've acquired like recently that sort of goes first. It's the same with everyone when they're aging anyway, but certainly when you've got dementia. So yeah, places from the past that are hardwired into your brain, uh, yeah, they kind of revive if you go to them sometimes. I think that's one thing that will really resonate with our listeners because so many of us love the Lake District, but more generally love the outdoors. And we've got so many of those places that are key parts in our own life stories that if we were to do a similar trip, it would provoke really strong memories and emotions as well. So I think watching the film and watching that journey was really emotional for for Amy and I, but Mm. will be for a lot of outdoorsy folk and a lot of the audience. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, a lot of resonances, I hope, yeah. Absolutely. I think that's our time, unfortunately, but this has been absolutely wonderful to speak to both of you and congratulations again on the film. It's yeah, wonderful. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Thanks for listening to this latest episode of Footnotes, the Cicerone podcast. And thanks so much to Harry McQueen and Dick Pope for joining us to talk about that new film, Supernova. The film is out in UK cinemas on the 25th of June. If you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, do let us know what you think by leaving reviews on Apple Podcasts or emailing us live at cicerone.co.uk. We'd really love to hear from you. To keep up to date with the podcast, please follow or subscribe on your favourite podcast app or provider. You can also listen on the Cicerone website, www.cicerone.co.uk, where you can browse our full range of guidebooks, read our articles and sign up to our newsletter. We'll be back in a couple of weeks with the next episode. So in the meantime, search for at Cicerone Press on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And you can also join our Facebook community group, Cicerone Connect, to connect with other outdoor enthusiasts. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you soon.